Welcome, fellow lovers of film, to Rule Thirds, a podcast dedicated to the art and industry of cinema. And uh, we actually are a podcast now. This is uh, the first time we're the Rule Thirds uh, just as a podcast. And if this is your first time tuning in, hello. Uh, just to recap, we talk about movies. Uh, my name is Sean Capterville. My name is Larry Freed. And my name is Max Mariner. All right, after the, uh, there's there's our roll call. You'll get to know us better, hopefully. And for those that have listened to us before, our previous hypothetical uh, viewers, welcome back. We have a shiny new name. So uh, let's get to our topic. Our topic is pretty great. It's pretty simple, but I'm, I'm really excited for it. It is the best and worst film of 2014. We're each going to give our picks, and we'll see if some sparks fly or if we're in agreement. It'll be interesting to see. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so how's everyone doing on this uh, inaugural episode recording day? I'm excited. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this inaugural episode. Yes, but, but not really. Again, nothing's really changed since it was called Cinema Talk. Yeah, it's we're still just, us. It's still, we're just pretty much taking it, rebranding yeah. it, and well, hey, shoving Sean, it down a new tube. Why don't, before we go into our picks, why don't we just talk about who the hell we are? You know, where did we come oh, from? You know, that is a really good idea. So, my name is Sean. I'm from Montana. I'm a film student at uh, MSU, Montana State University. And um, that's really all that's really relevant here. My favorite movie, I guess, is Casablanca. That's good to list, everyone. So, list your favorite movie. And, um, yeah, that's about all you need to know right now. So, who wants to go next? Okay, I'll go. Uh, my name is Larry. I'm an aspiring film student, currently a senior. Um, and... Uh... I just love movies, man. I think that's all you need to really take away from me. My favorite movie is The Emperor's New Groove. Boom, Max. baby. Um, uh, cliche, hi, cliche. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Max. I'm uh, also a film student. I go to a college in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, and I'm, fr I'm originally from California. And my favorite movie is Back to the Future. Totally mm -hmm. original pick, you guys. Totally. <laughs> the most. Yes. Well, hey, look, I'm I'm doing Casablanca, so that's not that original either. So, what about like, and, like, where we come from? You know, we're rule thirds. Like, okay. we just what's rule thirds, existence? Sean? What's rule well, thirds? Rule thirds. Well, really, this all started as um, Cinematac. We were a, a biweekly video show over on a website, ScrewAttack.com, and we did segments like the trailer segment, uh, the news segment, a review segment, and recommendation domination is what it was called. We did a show for what twenty episodes, something like that. Nineteen, yeah. I think. It, Exactly. 18, 19, somewhere in there. And then that just wasn't working out for us. We weren't getting the views, and so we decided to split it up. And we launched a full website, rulethirds.com, where the trailer segment was its own show that I took over, where the news was its own show that Max took over for a bit, and Larry took over this stuff. We kept, did reviews on their own, a new format. It was exciting. We started this podcast there. Cinema Talk is kind of a reference to that name. Um, and then just recently, that website just kind of got out of hand for us. Our lives made it difficult. So we decided to cut down to just this podcast. Podcast, and we decided that it's weird to be RuleThirds.com and the only thing on it being Cinema Talk, so we're just uh, Rule Thirds, the podcast. So now we're just Rule Thirds. That's the name of the podcast. Yeah. So that's our history, really short. But I do think we should get to uh, a brief history the topic. Yeah, a brief say. history of the artist, the artist formerly known as Rule Thirds. So we should get to the topic <laughs> though. So are you guys ready to get into the topic? Let's yeah. go. Okay. So to recap, we are doing best and worst movie singular. Of 2014. So what we're going to do is we're each going to give our pick for what we think is the best and worst. And that's kind of also, it pretty much boils down to favorite and least favorite. You know, this isn't going to be analysis of like, oh yes, what a wonderfully made film. It's going to be what we liked the most, what we responded to the most positively. Now that can definitely be a well-made movie. In fact, it probably should be. But that's not necessarily what we're talking about. And we're also going to be doing some runner-ups and briefly talk about why they were picked. But the main discussion is going to be on the three best and three worst we each give one, of course. So I decided we should start with the worst, because people like negativity. Let's give the people what they want right away, and yeah. it's nice to end on a happy note. So Woo. here we go. Uh, the worst. W what was the worst movie of 2014? Who wants to go first with their runner-up? Let's do the runner-ups first, and then we'll each do our worst. Who wants to give their runner-up first? I'll give my runner-up first. All right, Max, go ahead. So my runner-up, um, I've only, to be honest, I've only really seen three movies of this year that I can honestly call terrible. Each with their different uh, traits. Like, they're not all just, like, the same... Like, they're not all, like, terrible movies because of the same reasons. And I think, mm -hmm. for my number two spot, I'm gonna give it to a movie that I was excited for, that I was really, like, looking forward to. I was, I was pumped about it. 
and it really just turned out to be just a god awful film, and that would be Angry Video Game Nerd the movie. Yeah, actually, to be you know, to be perfectly honest, I was I'm not surprised that's there. I'm surprised it wasn't your worst movie of the year because we did our review and you were not happy with that. Movie. I wasn't so, happy. Yes, I was infuriated. Yeah. So briefly like, talk about why. Um, with uh, with James Rolfe. James Rolfe has been an idol for me for so many years. Sean can attest to that. And yes. um, we met like, him at a at a convention. And he freaked out. Yeah, I absolutely freaked out. That's that's a good story. <laughs> I'll tell sometime. But um, yeah. With James Rolfe, he was always a guy who always like promoted doing it and never giving up, even if the product didn't exactly come out the best way. And with this movie based on the on his incredibly popular web series, the father of all video game culture web series yeah, content that kind of spawned Cinemata- uh, Cinematac in, in yeah. many different ways. Content producers would not be here without yeah James yeah. Rolfe. Um, so I was really looking forward to it because, like, this was, like, you know, after so many episodes, he was going to do it. He was going to make this, like, big entrance of the movie. And one of the things that I knew about it was that it was going to be very much focused on a, uh, on the B-movie aesthetics of, like, the past, of, of, like, six, like, five or six decades ago. And I was looking forward to that because, hey, you know, that's a, that's a style that can totally work, especially in regards to movies of, the of like, the new generation. And even so... So many of the worst aspects and worst stereotypes of film culture from five or six decades ago come in right here. We have a token mm. black sidekick, which is yeah. so bad. Yeah. So bad. I'm surprised nobody raised a serious issue about that, because that is, that is a serious issue. We had a, a woman, a female character whose only trait was that she was trying to not be the stereotypical female character that gets no development, and then she was that, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> And uh, we have a story that just goes at a crappy pace, and just all of it really just ends up being bad. And it's got some of the worst fourth wall humor I've ever heard, which yeah. is which bothers me because fourth wall humor is like my favorite. So it's <laughs> I, I know these aren't exactly like you know unique reasons, but the movie it tried to go for an aesthetic, and there were some parts that made it like it that made sense. But overall, it was such a catastrophe. A terribly written mm-hmm. movie with a terrible yeah. with a terrible cast and honestly revolving around a subject matter and a web show that really didn't really have room for a story. Yeah, that, look, and that's I'm gonna agree it, with that. Yeah, and I gotta be really honest. None of us liked it. Look, I'm Is gonna be really what... honest. All right. Yeah, look, when I always had the bad feeling that this web show did not lend itself very well to a film, I kind no of was a little shocked. No web show honestly shocked. does. I know, but this one in particular doesn't because there's barely an ongoing storyline to begin with except for the fact that he's a nerd that's it yeah. uh and i think the movie's biggest crime i don't hate it as much as max does maybe because i wasn't as excited for it as max was but i think the main problem with it is that it's not very exciting it's not very interesting it's kind of a bore uh i was just kind of watching it and just eh, yeah it's a movie yeah i'll also say it's, it's it. super super egocentric like this movie like yeah, it just it's base it, it is kind of an hour and a half of the AVG and jerking off to himself. But that's beside the point. Nice. Masturbation joke. Alright, Larry, do you want to do your runner up or do you want to close us out? Uh no, I'll do the runner up. Alright. Uh my runner up uh is one that we that I this is probably the most stark disagreement that me and Sean and Max have for the year. And that's Maleficent. That was that's mm-hmm. my second worst of the year. And now it would be my worst, but I gave it a rewatch. Oh, okay. Good. To good. It's be, always good to reevaluate. and I'm gonna be very. I'm gonna be honest, and I don't usually do stuff like that, but I let my adaptationy side get to me. Um, ah. I I really like the character of Maleficent, and I really like you know Sleeping Beauty. I don't think it's a movie that's held up well at all. See, I would disagree. Um, actually, I recently rewatched it in a Disney class, and I really enjoyed it. So we'll have to uh, have a talk about that. I mean, the someday. music music's great, animation's great. I just think it's kind of boring. Uh, in my honest opinion, but we'll the, talk about that. Yeah, Maleficent is just so evil. You know, I just I love how like I love how much she loves being evil, and I think it would have been great to expand upon that. Maleficent just kind of boils her down to this typical oh the villain's not such a bad guy after all thing. But boils when you look down. at I don't know well, about that. when you look at Maleficent on its own, if you just take Sleeping Beauty out of the picture, despite how hard it is to do that, but if you just look at it as its own interpretation of a narrative. It's passable, just overall and hmm. how it okay. does things. I'm still going to go by that it has a ton of plot holes, so yeah, many unnecessary plot holes. That doesn't and, and the writing and the acting, is just, they're not good either. But yeah, I see, will say the... the pacing and the plot progression itself, as well as Jolie, are passable. 
No, you know? that's fair. I mean, I would I would say that on paper it has an excellent story, but the direction wasn't that great. So yes. I get why you might not like it. I mean, I was underwhelmed. I yeah, hope, any but... under under any underwhelming things that came from me were just real personal gripes that I mm. feel shouldn't have gotten the way of the movie as. But it's still not a very good. It's still a bad movie. It's it's a bad and movie. See, I would but... disagree. I thought yeah, it was I, okay. I disagree too. I, I think know, it's just guys, kind of bold. I'm very but the runner-up sure of is that. not where we have our giant right. debate, so right. we'll, we'll hold just, off on that. I just that. wanted to clear that up because we had a whole debate about Maleficent in a po- yeah. an earlier episode, and I mm-hmm. decided after that to give it a rewatch, and those are my thoughts as of now. Okay, I'm glad you gave it a rewatch because it, it's good to have a new angle. Right. Um, okay, so my runner-up for worst movie of the year is uh, The Expendables 3. Nah. Hmm. And nice. I'm one of the people that Expendables One is okay. It has its its awesome moments. And yeah, but it was a little too bogged down with its serious side. It was still try, it was still trying to kind of be serious. And then Expendables Two was just hilariously just went all out and just wonderful action and just such a fun ride. And so I had high hopes for Expendables Three even after the PG thirteen rating. But this movie it was just terrible. It's it's hard. Like before recording this, I was trying to like write down like why is it terrible? You know, just give some bullet points. But I, I couldn't. It's it's just nothing worked is the problem. Like, all the characters were bland. I mean, maybe a few standout moments of one. You're like, oh, that's what the trait they, they were trying to go for. Oh. But that was so rare to even th- see what they were trying to do with the characters. They were all bland. The story was ex- is exactly what you think. Like, there are no surprises. And the action wasn't good. That's probably its biggest crime, because that's the only reason you go to Expendables is for the action, right? I mean, you yeah. two haven't seen Expendables 3, right? No. Nope. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to be kind of talking to myself here. It's a shame. Um, True shame. Yeah, see Expendables 2, good. Max, but not 1 or 3. I mean, if you like 2, you could maybe see 1, but definitely not 3, because it's just a terrible movie, and it, it wasn't fun. It wasn't good action. It just... I think the PG-13 did end up hurting it, because it was just terribly cut and shot action. It was just... It was just kind of the worst of, like, you know, typical action, mindless, incompetent action it's a bad, bad you know actually it's a bad rap because of movies like this that's basically how i'd boil it down people say oh it's just an action movie this is the movie they're th- they're talking about it's expendables shame. 3 yeah it was just terrible and uh, oh, yeah well. not great eh. so there's our runner ups now we get to the actual worst movie of 2014 I'm already giving my guesses as to what they are. Yeah, I think you two both know mine. I know um, yours. Oh, do so I? So, who wants to go? Oh, do I? Uh, well, let's go in the same order. Let's uh, have Max do I want to go last. All right, then let's let him go last. Larry, do you want to go first or second? All right, I'll, I'll go first. Whatever. Go Just going to roll out with the punches. We've discussed this many a time. Uh, the worst movie of 2014 for me is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. What? Um, I know, right? Crazy. It's yes? Now to be now let me now let me be clear. I am oh, positive that there were several worse movies that came out this year. Like I am like I heard Annie was like literally torture. So I'm positive. <laughs> literal torture. Yes, no. literal torture. I've I mean, heard Cameron it was Diaz just forgettable, has, has, but yeah. and again, come on. Come on. Uh, but Wait, so there's more what? than just the movie itself that makes me upset about the Amazing Spider-Man two. Um, not only is it just is the story really poorly told? Uh, are the villains really bad? And just, all, besides for the action scenes, everything just boils down to straight up boredom. Uh, the main reason I dislike this movie is because it is the perfect example of how you can have a really good movie. Because there have been reports that the script was changed a lot by Sony mm-hmm. in, in post production. You can have a great movie. That just gets ruined by short, uh, sort of cheapskate, you know, let's make a quick buck. Let's try to do what they're doing, you know. Um, methods. They're trying to be the MCU. Yes. I think, I think we all, we all knew Amazing Spider Man 2 was, it was pretty much Marvel's Iron Man, uh, essentially. It was a movie that was trying to introduce a lot of. Well, actually, it's more like Iron Man 2. It was trying to introduce some concepts that would eventually end up building up to uh, a Avengers or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't work uh, because you have all of these characters and the stories. See, here's the biggest crime it has. It tries to combine all these different stories together. You have Spider-Man. You have Gwen Stacy. You have Electro. You have the Goblin. You have the Rhino. God, the Rhino. Uh, you have oh. all these stories going on. And the movie decides to intersperse them. 
and make it choppy so you're trying to still tell multiple stories at once and the movie never gives enough time to actually get into these characters to really feel for them and that also kind of works hand in hand with the writing just being terrible um and so what you're given is a movie with a bunch of characters besides for spider-man and gwen stacy because we already had a movie to get to like them you have a movie that doesn't give any li- any you know reasonable or likable villains uh, obviously, villains aren't really meant to be likable, but you know what I mean. Sort of like yeah, in the way that people yeah. really love the Joker as a villain, despite the fact that he's really a terrible person. Um, what? You just, yeah, uh, you, and you have just a sloppy movie. I mean, I'll give it credit. The action scenes are good, but after rewatching it, yes, I saw it a second time in preparation for this. Um, it just, they're not as well made as you would think. You know, as a first glance, you're like, oh, yeah, these action scenes are good. But then you're just like, eh, you know, they're not as good as some of the other action scenes I've they seen. They look like video game cutscenes sometimes. Like, I know, legit. Right? Like, I, you could see them on a yeah. PS3. It, yeah, and mm. like, let me tell you, I saw a lot of action movies this year, and after seeing Baby Spider-Man 2 all over again, it just, it don't work. It don't hold up. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. It's terrible. So, and, Max, I have a quick question. Is this your worst movie of the year? No, it's not. Oh, I, interesting. I, I, I already know what Max's worst of the year. Okay, so, so I, I've, I um, know. I can have a surprise for you two. Uh-oh. I recently posted my film list 2014 on the site. You can go check that out of every movie I saw in 2014. I may have lied a bit at the end. Oh my God. Just a little. Did you? I saw it. And yes, finally. Jesus. So for those who don't know, Max and Larry kept saying over and over, go watch Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's like the worst thing ever. Because we wanted because you to be a part of the conversation. And we, I was yes. hoping that you would maybe like it so we can have a freaking discussion about it. Instead of just. Oh, well then happy birthday, Max. You oh, liked wow. it? Wow, really? Yeah, I, 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 I liked it okay. Like, I'm not I'm not in love with it. It's not going to be a runner-up or a winner for best by any means. But I enjoyed myself. Oh, I don't wow. get... I mean, okay, let me let me say this. Maybe it was lowered expectations. Maybe it was just, I, you know, I was expecting awfulness and it didn't live up to that. But I seriously don't see the terribleness that you two see. I would not call it a terrible movie okay, by any well, stretch. Can you I wouldn't at least... call it a good movie, but I wouldn't call it terrible. Okay, can you at least tell me the Rhino was... BS. Please no, tell the me rhino, you don't no, like see, that's the rhino. No, that's, see, that's totally on the fault of the audience. In movie, that sort of thing is done all the time. It was an introductory action set piece, and then it was a nice little bookend at the end. That is not... That no, is I'm just fine. talking about the execution of his character overall. What, just a super over-the-top villain? Yeah, whatever, it's Spider-Man. All his no. villains are super over-the-top. Do you remember the Green Goblin? Yeah, yeah but the Amazing on, Spider-Man definitely dumbed that down. Okay, here, yeah, okay, I will say that. The biggest crime of Amazing Spider-Man 2 is that it's, it's very simple. What? And, like, safe. Wait, it's just kind of ASM like... ASM 2 is simple? No, the first no. Amazing oh, Spider-Man. Oh, the first one. Okay, okay, sorry. No, sorry. the second. Wait, the second. The se- it's just like... No, it's yeah, a complex it's like, mess. It's trying to do so many things at once. It's it very really complex. Isn't. It yes, really isn't. Yes, it is. Isn't. Okay. No. Let, no, let's, let's talk about like, this. Okay, in let's make a year, list. Let's just make a list of how, let's see how many things that the Amazing Spider-Man Two is trying to juggle. All right, let's let's make a list. You have Peter Parker's inner dilemmas. Uh, yeah, we uh, I, should I spoil what happens at the end? Sure. Okay. So Gwen Stacy dies, right? So <gasps> what? So we have Peter Parker's inner dilemmas. By the way, another terrible thing about the movie it's it just wishes over that death in literally less than five minutes. That's another okay, Yeah, that was a bit quick. You have Peter Parker's just inner dilemmas, and you also have his dilemmas with his father and the whole scientific research thing and about how he, with him and Oscorp, right. and this terrible thing. Then you have Electro and his entire right. character, him with Spider-Man just sort of, he took Spider-Man as a false idol, and once he, you know, just like he normally yeah, would, see, didn't remember his here's, name, okay, he goes look, I'm going to stop you right there. Here's what I mean by simple. I'm glad you brought up the Electro thing. What I mean by simple is it's like what is the what is electro's thing oh i'm worshiping spider-man because he saved me once and then oh spider-man took his spotlight i am evils that that's what i mean by simple like humans don't really act that way <laughs> you know that's that's not a natural progression that's been not so even a little simplified bit. well no, not I mean, even a little bit the it's progression simple is in the awful. fact like you can get that in, in a bullet point you can t- get that you know, it made sense, okay, but, but it was oversimp. Yeah, just because hmm, you can, it was just oversimplified. Be- just because you can get it doesn't mean that the movie shouldn't try to expand upon it. Right, and that's the thing. No, I totally get that. It has a lot to do, but I don't think it was nearly as a mess as people are saying. Like, 
the goblin thing worked right into Electro, worked right into the uh, conflict Peter was having with the promise he made to Gwen's father. Like, it all fit together. The only thing that didn't entirely fit together was his father's secret research or whatever. Which I felt, like, I thought was just build up for a bigger movie universe or whatever, but then it got resolved, so... No, but, like, I'm not saying was. it didn't fit together. Obviously, the, the, if you put the events on paper, they make a path. I'm saying the way that they cut the scenes together and they tried to tell so well, okay. many stories at the same exact time. It's, it's very textbook. It's, yeah, it it's, was just it's it oversimplified was... in its characters and motives and stuff. And it sets up so Garfield much for other Emma movies Stone. instead of telling its own I know. story. I know, oh, like, I know. But Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone just totally like sold throughout it. I think, it. That, I think it was yeah. overdone. I think it was totally like exploited. Oh, I disagree. I disagree with but that. No, I they think have great the only... chemistry. And yeah, no, their good chemistry actors. is good. It's great just actors. overdone. And it's not like... Oh, I think the only good part about Amazing Spider-Man 2 that still stands is the relationship between Andrew Garfield and No, the only good thing about Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the amazing soundtrack. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I don't yeah, understand I did like the why yeah. everyone loves the soundtrack. Dun, I don't dun, get dun. it. Da, da. The I electro don't. sound soundtrack is okay. Awesome. Maybe the electro that, like, ideas were <laughs> interesting. I mean, I get that the the itsy bitsy spider thing that was, was awesome. Was actually, cool. when he was yeah, it's bitsy uh, spider. Fun fact, actually, I didn't re- I didn't notice that as I was watching it the first time. Wait, what? After Spidey it, explicitly said, time, "I hate this song." Yeah, it was it was so unforgettable to me. I just did so many other things I was thinking about as I was watching the movie. But like, here's uh, the, here's problem. the thing I don't like though. It's just like they try to set up electro as this guy like. Oh man, you sort of feel for this guy. Like they they were trying to go for like he's yeah, just some simpleton. But no, that's not how it goes. He's an idiot. Nothing yes. about his character <laughs> makes me feel. Oh, you don't deserve to get whooped in the ass by Spider Man. No, you can I, feel bad for idiots. No, I can't feel bad for people that have false idols and eventually don't understand that Spider Man obviously has a ton of fans everywhere. So why would he remember your name out of every single other person well, he yeah, has to he deal was with? Stupid, but yeah. I can feel bad for remember like, Great name, Gatsby, yeah. your sympathy for Gatsby boils down to can you have sympathy for idiots? Yeah, but see, here's the thing: and like, I my felt sympathy really for, Gatsby, bad for Gatsby, guys. my sympathy for Gatsby doesn't guys. go that far either. Okay, Again. you're right. We should wrap it up. And here's so, the... in conclusion, I thought it was an all right movie. It's very textbook and simplified, but you know, whatever, enjoyable. It's a popcorn movie, which I guess why people were reacted so badly is that now, especially this year, superhero movies have evolved beyond being just popcorn movies. So this felt like a step back. So I totally get that anger, but I think on its own, it's a okay movie. It's all right, but it I has also some enjoyment. I also think it's important to realize there probably was a great movie. Hidden yeah, under maybe. all of the changes maybe. and switches and reformatting that Sony we'll probably see. did. Well, maybe someday we'll get a script of the original or whatever. I really freaking hope so. Once but we, once, we should probably move on. From yeah, Spider-Man once the because are they still doing the Spider-Man movies? Is that like the no, universe still being done? Over. Okay, they're yeah, I really over. hope but so. We'll, we'll have to see. There what was it lost to an R-rated comedy, guys. That's all right. Anyway, yep, it was yeah, bad. seriously. Ugh. Okay, so Ugh. Max, did you want to close out? Yeah, I'll close this out. So go ahead, Sean. I really because this isn't going to be. I can't you know what my oh, number one is. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> of course we so know what your number one is. Because we didn't do a review is. on it. Yeah, my... I wish you two had seen this movie. I did too. It's going to be hard for me to properly express hey, why it Sean, is. Hey, Sean, we'll just let you go at it. Okay, thank you. Um, my worst film of the year is Lucy. Um, To sum up why it's my worst, n- literally not a single second of that film works. Seriously, like I was, I watched it a second time with my roommate because I, I, he didn't believe me of how like ridiculous I was hyping it up to be terrible. So we went to my campus theater for cheap. So I didn't pay full price. I'm nice. not supporting the movie anymore after that one viewing. Nice. But second viewing, I was watching and I was waiting for a single second where I'm like, ah, that was genuine or, ooh, good concept or good read, good line read, anything. Like, anything that was working, anything that wasn't ridiculously pretentious and dumb. Nothing. Nothing came up. I mean, it boils down to that. It it doesn't work at all because it thinks it is being this, like, what is humanity? It's about this woman who transcends what humanity is in the next step of evolution. But it's the dumbest movie I saw all year, and I saw Transformers 4. Twice. I would still call (laughs) Lucy by far the dumbest movie of the year. Because there's actually, like, one good concept in Transformers, I bet. Like, I bet I could find one. But Lucy, I know I can't, because I was looking the second time. I was looking so hard. And here's the funny thing. I just walked into this movie in disbelief. 
that it was so dumb and so over the top and goofy. Like, this is a goofy movie. That's the movie. That's the word I would use. Like, the trailers try to make it seem so serious, and it thinks it's so serious, but it is goofy. It is so goofy. You know, that's kind of that's kind of how uh, other works directed by Luc Besson has been. Have you guys seen well, yeah. uh, The Professional? Leon no, the Professional? I've not. It's I, I've seen it. It's very much like what if a, what if a French filmmaker did uh, an American '90s action movie, and it's it's really goofy. The the main character yeah. does a war cry at one point, like a, <laughs> like a legitimate yeah. I don't really? know. He has a very interesting style wow. that I don't think really, you know, I don't really think, like, gets in touch with a lot of moviegoers like us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, anyway, it, it was super goofy. I walked out, like, just in disbelief. Like, you can, I mean, if we could ask the friend I went to originally with, and I was just, like, almost speechless at just how goofy and silly and how none of it worked. And it was trying to be so serious. And I, But but the, the, the truth of the matter was, I didn't really care. Because I just seen a complete misfire. Like, what's the problem with a misfire? Yeah, it's disappointing, but I, d- I wasn't excited. So I wasn't disappointed. You know, I had no anticipation. It was just a misfire, and it was silly, and I got some good laughs out of it, whatever. So I wasn't angry. I, I really wasn't. I want to I wanna be completely honest. I was not angry at Lucy when I walked out. If after I walked out, you told me that that would be what I would name the worst movie of 2014, I would kind of be surprised. Why it's my worst movie of 2014 is because I went home. And I went on IMDb, and I went on Metacritic, and I went on Rotten Tomatoes, and I saw all the reviews from professional critics praising it. And I saw people, other audience members, saying that this is the mo- like an, an, uh, an intelligent science fiction film for this decade. You know, like this is this is a big deal. This is pushing boundaries. This is questioning. These are questions that need to be asked. It's a, it's a brave sci-fi film. And it hit me that that is what this movie was trying to be. And then it hit me at how abysmally and pathetically it failed. And I could not help but hate it more and more. That's why it's my worst, because I realized just how much of a failure it was. This isn't a silly, goofy action movie. This is a complete failure of a serious movie. And that is way worse. Bravo, okay. Mr. Cas- Mr. Captainville, bravo. Yeah. Thank you. I wish you I could add I'm something, done. but we haven't seen it. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, you two should I see like... it. I would love to do a podcast on it, so you two understood. Because, again, I, I took my roommate who wanted to, who didn't believe me, right? So we were sitting in the theater, and I said, look, I know I keep hyping this, that it's super goofy. I, I, I don't think you're ready for how <laughs> goofy it is and silly. And he said, I'm sure it's, I'll be fine. And we were walking out of the theater. Do you know what the first thing he said to me was? What? Through his laughter, he said, I was not ready for that. (laughs) Even with, like, months of buildup. Because I saw it in the summer. And it didn't get hit my theater until, like, mid this semester. So it was, like, three months of me telling my friend, it is so goofy, it's so bad and silly. Even after all that, he was not prepared. So even after this speech, and even after me telling you that anecdote, you two probably aren't prepared for it. So you should go watch it. I am not prepared for it. We'll go meet up and talk about how goofy and how... Just it doesn't work on any level for a single second. But Scarlett hey, Johansson, it, you are talented. You just, just it'll pick be a movies. good it'll be a good look back. Yeah, you know, with with all the barrenness and Scott the next months, maybe we could look at different it. Different movies this year. Yes, but that's that's it. Lucy, worst movie of the year. All Max, right, Max, why don't just you tell it already? I already, I already know. Okay, I already all know. right. Would you would you knock it off? Okay, sorry. So, so I'm gonna give it some build up. Ooh, Harry okay. Potter, close to my heart. Pokemon, pretty freaking close to my heart. Muppets, oh, created the heart. Yeah. It told created, you. Oh, man. and I told you. and I, I will say that when I walked into the movie that is associated with this franchise that came out this year, I try my best not to have expectations for movies, but I guess I just did. I just have some natural biases when it comes to the Muppets because they're so important to me. Muppets Most Wanted is like the surface of Mars. Do you know why it's like the surface of Mars? Lifeless. It's devoid of life. Oh, yeah. oh damn! Hmm. Nice, Sean. First now, try. I will say right now that the Amazing Spider-Man Two and the AVGN movie are worse made movies. Mm-hmm. But oh, I definitely. cannot think of a time when I had such a frantic and just incomprehensible experience at what the movie I was watching was doing. I was looking at it. I was waiting for, to, to, uh, for a point to laugh, for a point to feel something. But this movie is someone trying to make something out of a material that is so much more comprehensive and so much smarter and so much greater than than he or she could ever comprehend. And they're making it this lifeless, soulless movie. 
I've no- I've noticed this about myself. I especially take issue with movies that at least tr- like at least don't have any sort of personality to them. That's why I thought Jack the Giant Slayer was the worst movie I saw in 2013 because with the same thing with this, it just felt so devoid of anything. This is the same thing. Not only do we have forgettable songs and not a single point did I laugh at anything, we also have a really stupid plot, a really stupid villain, a really stupid psychic in the form of the really irritating Ricky Gervais, which I know I'm just kind of on the min- my, in, in the minority of. We also have literally the worst cinematography out of any movie I've ever seen. Like, it was the Whoa. first time in my life oh my where I seriously God, looked at it and Max, said, you need to calm down. Jesus. It's so, no, no, like, no, this is good. No. I, like... I was, yeah, I was looking forward to this movie. Fine. I was hoping it would be good. What this teaches me is that the people who worked on that movie had absolutely no idea that what they were working on was something special. They just thought, oh, it's another Disney property. Oh, we'll just make it into a funny kids movie. And you know what? There are people out there who love this movie. And I I can understand because it's not really a badly made film. It just does what it needs to and goes away. And with Muppets, you have to do better than that. I'm sorry. I know this is a natural, nostalgic bias, but it's true. You can't just take the Muppets and make, oh, it's just a thing, you know? Like, other Muppet movies have had this problem, but Muppets Most Wanted wasn't even funny. It wasn't, like, musical. Like, the best part of the movie was at the very beginning when they they were talking about doing a sequel. Like, not even the meta humor outside of that was funny. And, and the 22 Muppets... Jump Street did sequel meta humor much better. Yeah. And like, that was the whole movie. Yeah, like, just we're doing a sequel is a great <laughs> song. But everything else is just so devoid. Like, you know, I want to say, Sean, like, it's just, you know, it's it's like the worst movie of the year. I guess it's not, but it's the one that that was just the worst movie going experience. Yeah. No, that's good. That's what we that's want. Good. That's yeah. what we want. Yeah, like, your yeah, personal that's what our worst. Should be. Your personal worst. Like, yeah, this was yep. the worst movie I saw this year because it was, it, it felt like somebody just treated them up. It's like... Just another property. Where with any property that you adapt, you have to treat it much better than that. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, think about it this way. I'm done. I mean, like, I, I personally think that Maleficent is farly, worsely made than Amazing Spider-Man Two is. But I still don't like. I think Amazing Spider-Man Two was worse for other reasons, personal reasons. Yeah. And and, and, um, I'll, and I'll say this too. I'll say this too. You got to do better with the follow-up to the Muppets, the best Muppet movie. I'm just gonna say that. Jesus. Well, I haven't I seen the Muppets, wow. and that's the thing. What? A, oh, actually, what that's not true, Max. I have seen Muppet Treasure Island now, which was much better than Most Wanted. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, and, I'm, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm the guy who's really picky about Muppet movies. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the of the Great Muppet Caper or Muppets Take Manhattan. Not even the Muppet movie, but like the Muppets was like there because it was about the people who were watching. It was about like it was about us as opposed to them. Like they had, you know, the Muppets had humor to bounce off of. This is just a stupid crime caper that just decides we're just going to be completely devoid of everything. And it made Tina Fey look irritated. Tina Fey irritated me in this movie. And yeah, that is a is crime against Tina Fey. Yeah, that's true. The whole side plot they had with her in love with, in love with Kermit the Frog was really unsettling. I, yeah, I really unsettling did not like and re- that. Yeah. Ugh. It was just a poorly thought out movie. It did feel very just, let's just make a Muppet sequel it didn't uh, it definitely lacked passion and even Muppet Treasure Island which some will say is the best but most of the, like from what I've heard isn't the best Muppet movie th- that's the only other one I've seen like that had much more passion yeah. in it than, exactly. than most wanted no, I've, so I I've get where you're coming from hey, I've seen video game fans this romance this, this Russian woman and this frog is far more unsettling than Sonic 06 ever was that is how bad that is <laughs> God. and that oh, is how yeah, well, God. horrible this movie is just you ju- he, he just compared yeah. the movie to Sonic 06. I think that's a strong enough statement on its own. Yeah. yeah. So we can move mm-hmm. on. Yeah. For those who don't get the reference, wow. don't worry. It's a, it's a terrible game, and it's like, what but this movie's worse. What a great rant. What a great rant for an inaugural episode. I don't think we're going to yes. be able to ever top that. Well, I, that's I, the thing. Now wow. that the negative's out of the way, yeah, let's I don't take a like breath. to talk oh, about I'm going to push. Wow. Oh, I know. But now we get to be positive, Max. It's okay. Thank you for doing yeah. that. I think that went really well, and it's very entertaining to hear you uh, spew your hatred <laughs> wow. for that movie. It was good. What and I spewed a bit wow. of my hatred for Lucy. And uh, Larry, you just kind of kept under wraps. So next time, I would like some uh, screaming, shouting, swearing, please. Okay. Um, okay. Let's move to the okay. positive. Fine. Next time I find something <laughs> negative, I will just go all out and spit all over my pop filter for you, Sean. Because that's what the people want. Exactly. Ex- blow ups, big blow ups. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's like I said, let's move on to the positives. Are you guys ready for that? Oh, very it's much. Not let's really, push no. Lucy and Spider-Man Two and Muppets out of our mind. Okay, Max, I'll give you some recovery then. You'll 
No, go I just like okay. Robert here's the <laughs> thing. Here's the thing. I honestly, I'm just gonna give a disclaimer. I've been very busy, and I haven't been able to see a lot of the really, like, really, like, the critically acclaimed movies like Boyhood and Foxcatcher and all that stuff. So, honestly, I'm going to stick with Blockbusters, because that's the stuff I saw this year, and I'm not really well, proud and of also, it, but that's gonna be that's going to be my favorites. Like, my well, yeah, I mean, no, 10, like, not, there's not a like, single one that it wasn't wide release. Yeah, th- so I mean, no, no, I'm not that's talking about, like, wide release. I'm just talking about, like, none of the stuff I, like, I haven't really gone to the movie theater outside of Hobbit recently or in Mockingjay right. for anything like particular. I'm just going to say that. Just going to put that disclaimer out there. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's totally right. understandable. No you can't problem. see every movie. Hopefully people yep. get that. Yep. So, without further ado, um, Larry, do you want to kick us off with your runner-up for best movie of 2014? All right, yeah. Runner-up, best movie, 2014. For me, uh, Nightcrawler uh, is, mm. my, is my second favorite. Jake Ooh, Gyllenhaal. That was a good uh, one. Stuck. Oh, it was so good. Oh, my goodness. Okay, when I go to the movie theater, there's one thing I like to have in mind before I walk in. I want to be engaged in some way. I don't care whether it's because the movie's so bad. I don't care if it's because the movie's so good. I want to be engaged. Does Nightcrawler engage you? I mean, it, it immediately establishes this main character that Jake Hall, by the way, lost 30 pounds for. Which is which is all, which is pretty cool of him to do something like that. His eyes bulge right at you. I swear to God, he's one of the most unsettling <laughs> characters I've ever had to watch. He is just so maniacal and so cunning, though. Too like you ha- you hate him, but you love him, and so you already have this great character, so deep with great writing, also. So you, so you got that down, uh, and it's just it never loses its pace it keeps up this great plot essentially for those who don't know nightcrawler is about a guy who becomes a freelance journalist uh in la sort of like one of those people that gets like breaking news stories like literally as they happen for footage and so it starts off very tame oh look a guy just wants to get into a job but it descends into madness in fact it almost kind of reminded me of black swan a little bit yeah i've Uh, heard that actually yeah uh but now but black swan's way creepier just overall on just a Darren Aronofsky level. Uh, but Nightcrawler is just uh, it's so engaging. Never loses you even for a little bit. The only slightly disappointing thing I have about it is the ending's a little little cut and dry. But that's just that's really an extreme nitpick. This is just this is just one of the most engaging movies I've ever seen. It's great. Okay, cool. Now, I haven't seen it. Max, you want to add something really quick? Like, um, actually, it's about ethics in video journalism. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. and, and, I, and I know that's a reference to something, but it, like that's I'm being completely serious. Yeah, that, that is actually is what, what it's about. about. It's yeah, about that is true. Jungles. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll go then. Max, you can close us out then. Um, yeah. My runner up for best movie 2014 is X Men: Days of Future Past. Nice. I was thinking that was going to show up in here somehow. Definitely I, on yeah. my list. I mean, that's the thing. It's the first X Men movie that I just I love it. Like, I mean, I've enjoyed the other ones. Like, oh, that was good. But this one, I just oh man, I love this movie. And really, it, I, I rewatched it twice recently, um, and really, it did hit me why I love it so much, is because it, 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 it okay. A lot of blockbusters, it's the villain plan going through and the heroes trying to stop it, but it was, and that's fine. Like that can be done so well. I don't want to sound like that's a bad structure for your plot. It's fine to have your heroes reacting all the time. That's fine. That can work beautifully. But it was so refreshing to see a movie where every single plot point was driven by one of the characters, like one of the main characters, not explicitly a villain either. Like this movie doesn't really have an explicit villain. Well... And it was all driven. Now, I will argue forever that Magneto's not a straight villain. He's not a straight villain, but he is the antagonist. <laughs> sure. But anyway, everything was character driven and everything behind that was some philosophy driven. And that's the thing. Again, this is a blockbuster. We are talking about an X-Men movie, so I'm not going to talk like this is a huge philosophical debate about the human soul, but it was philosophically driven. Every action was made for a very clear reason that linked right to the character's psyche. And those, the psyches were very well performed. This had, this had amazing acting uh, in it, especially from James McAvoy and Fassbender. And then uh, Jennifer Lawrence just came in and decided to be the most important character. And like, it was just such a nice, a nice change of pace to have everything be defined by our, by our main characters. They weren't reacting to some greater evil they had to stop. They were reacting to each other and disagreeing with each other. And the audience was kind of in the middle of all this. And 
yeah, I just, I, I love it. I think it's brilliantly paced, great acting, very nice action, and yeah, I just stopped talking. I just love it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, fast. You know, I it's, it's funny. Um, when like when the movie was coming out, when we saw the posters, I wasn't particularly impressed, and everybody was saying like, "Oh, look, Mystique's in there just because you know it's Jennifer Lawrence. She yeah, gets top just billing. because it's Jennifer When Lawrence. the filmmakers did a great job of actually having her be a central part of the movie while also having she her as a top billed actress. She is the center of the movie. Yeah, yeah. and that's, she's, I, I think that's she's good. She's the center. Yeah. Maybe not the most screen time. Oh, no. You know, but Absolutely. she's the center. Yeah. I also... Yeah. I and also, we finally got a, a female anti-hero. Those are yes, so rare. finally. Oh, thank Jesus. you. We finally got one. I, I had also, a really good one, too. Yeah. I really like you guys the movie also the definitely cut? in my top ten. Yes, so, but what? we can talk about that. We're, that's a cool side topic. We'll, yeah, we'll get into it later. But yeah, right, we should. Okay, I was we just going to mention. I think the visual set pieces in this movie are absolutely fantastic. Yes. Spoiler and alert: When Fastbender lifts the yes, the oh baseball field around the White yes. House. Oh, that was amazing! It is easily oh. one of that is probably one of the best moments of the year. But I think what even tops that is the very end when mm-hmm. Mystique has to choose. Yep. Whether or not to shoot, I literally was Again, on the very thing, edge of It all of my boils seat. down to that. Yeah. yeah. And it's so intense. And that's what I love. It's an action movie, but look, rewatch it and tell me how important the action actually is. It's so nice that the action isn't very important. Mm-hmm. It's it, all about the character like, decisions yep, and stuff. I like that's to say, what ch- it changes never gets, the action never gets in the way of what makes X Men so interesting, which is the X Men. Uh, yeah, the, the philosophical differences between the X-Men and their paths and what the powers give them the ability to do. In in some ways, Days of Future Past is the ultimate superhero movie because the point of, like, why superhero movies are so good if they're given the proper time is that it takes just character stuff, you know, it's just here's what this character believes, and it lets them act on that in such powerful ways. This isn't just some guy that thinks this way. This is a guy that thinks that way and can bend metal or can enter people's minds or is invincible. That's what makes Superman movies so interesting, and Days of Future Past takes full advantage of that. It's just a philosophical battle between these characters, and th- those philosophies have huge impact because they can bend metal, they can enter people's minds. I don't know, I could call it the ultimate uh, superhero movie so far. I wouldn't I love disagree. It. I'm, I'm wouldn't done. disagree I'm with done. that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, still Sean's see Days of Future up, Past. Everybody. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm talking about it like it's my number one, but it's not, it's not, it's the runner-up. It's actually surprisingly close, though. I surprised myself re-watching Days of Future Past and how close it came to being my favorite. But, Max, what is your runner-up? Sorry, that went on way too long. My runner-up is actually kind of simple. It was it was hard for me to think of it at first, and I'm like, oh my god! Dawn of the Planet of the Apes! How could uh, I have completely forgotten about one. this classic masterpiece? Another no, Sean, great. no. Nope. 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 You stay out of this. No, yeah, it's Sean. really Stand. good. It's Stand. really good. I am not a hater of that movie. It's a really good movie. I yeah. I, I, think I just it's think like, it's overhyped. I think I it's like probably one of my favorite sequels ever because it improves on the original and absolutely just like destroys yes, the original. It does even with, on even the with original. James Franco's star I, power. It, like I wouldn't rises, say it yeah. destroys the but original. Ja- okay. It destroys it anyway. Here's <laughs> what here's what we do. We have a fantastic drama, a fantastic action movie. A fantastic science fiction movie, and you put them all together, and it's one movie, and it's great. Like I don't know if any of them I would call fantastic. Yeah, I would also, say Max. Max, you cannot tell me that the human characters are interesting. I found them particularly interesting. Not like great, but like uh, I found them interesting. And they were fine. Like they did their job. On, hey, hey, Sean, awesome. don't give me this. I, I didn't I, listen, Sean. Sean I didn't think Days of Future Past was great. About but the I, yeah, yeah. Let him talk. I didn't. I didn't ran your parade when you were talking Days of Future Past. I'm just saying. Um. So, so Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is such a functioning, like it's such an organic piece, and it's so cohesive in how it like tells its story. And I'm not, you know, and I'm not just like wowed by all the visual effects, even though they are pretty freaking amazing. I still say yeah. that the triumph of this movie is that there is a point where we see a monkey or an ape, excuse me, an ape riding a horse with two machine guns firing into the air. Now, p- picture that in your head. Out of context, that's that's stupid. <laughs> but in context, the movie, uh, I did not laugh. I didn't giggle. I was completely hooked by this movie. And it was able to do the most ridiculous thing, and still, I completely bought it. And I think that's an absolute triumph. When you can get me to completely buy that scenario, I think that's kind of a triumph on its very own. What this movie does is, like, totally, like, destroys any of the quote-unquote expectations that I had for it. I went into it, I'm like, okay, this, I mean, this is good, you know. Great, great, great movie. Freaking oh my great. God. Go buy it. 
awesome. You see, the only difference between <clears throat> me and you with this match is I was actually very much looking forward to it. Big fan of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, I thought it was a great movie. And this movie is Caesar says what? 11, 12 words in total? I mean, just yep. speaking the words itself. I mean, I'm not counting captions, which is more. Yeah. But yet he yeah. is one of the most intriguing, engaging characters of the yeah, year. He, definitely. He, Caesar's the, great. The motion capture yeah. done by Circus is just so polished. It's so well done. But like, and the forget about the motion capture, great. just how the character works, like functions, is really awesome. And he, and he makes for a fantastic protagonist. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we should probably move on to the best movies. <laughs> okay, well... Uh, yes, we should move on. I mean, that's what's so funny. I didn't expect, even from myself, this much like positivity on just a runner-up. So oh, we're about to let great. loose some serious positivity and love with our best movies of 2014. Yeah. Who wants the honor of closing? Who wants to give the last best uh, I'll movie? Go, I'll go next after the first. You know, I, you want me to go first? Sure. I can go first. Let's go or... right back to you, Max. What? Okay. What, what's your best movie? It's a tie. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Sorry, it's no. a tie. I no. cannot choose between no. these two movies. I can't. No, I've been thinking about it for literally to. the past two months. I'm sorry, Sean. No, I'm going to cut. Watched. I'm going to cut the podcast. I'm going to cut right now. I'm going to hit the stop button. No, no don't no. do it. No, That's come so on. That's so cheating. That's so I cheating. Can't th I can't. There's no way I can. Like, these two well, movies are so hey. different hey, and yet hey, so hey, hey, unbelievably close to flaw. Let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. Sean, Sean, Sean. Let's hear Max out. Let's see if we can make, maybe it's a bit more understandable if he gives us the movies. See, this is all the positivity and love I was warning you about earlier, by the way. Okay, okay. Max, what are the movies? Let's get a grip. Let's get a grip. My two favorite movies of the year are Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and The Lego Movie. These movies, like, I mean, unlike Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I was really excited for these movies. I don't know if I was expecting them to be great, but I was certainly looking forward to them and seeing what they would do, especially with The Lego Movie being the first movie made from the Lego Company, and directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, for one thing. And also, from Captain America, just seeing where he would go from there. Because for, with such a one-note character, it would have to be pretty interesting to put him in the modern world. And both times, I was completely hooked. I loved both these movies. And they do different things, such different things, but they do them so well. Lego Movie gives us a great look at nostalgia, but also understanding why we have such like nostalgic feelings towards something, and why we have such a bitterness toward the current things. In the case of the Legos, used to be so free, and now they're just like all like instructions. Captain America gave us kind of like a similar outlook in that we had a character not not defined by who he is, but defined by the world around him, and his and the world dictated his actions and how they would take place. And that's a really, really, really great accomplishment for a movie to have the setting be kind of the driving force of the character rather than the character's actions himself. I don't know which one is better, but I think to it, they, it both works. We have two great protagonists, two great, like, excellent visual styles, and I just, I can't choose between them. They're two amazing films, and I, like, and they do two things, like, they're two completely different films, but I couldn't choose between them. I gotta say, it's a little bit more understandable. I will admit, uh, a tiny bit, tying but... it, tiny, tying like, it's it a like, little. If, it would be bad if I but... said Captain America and Guardians. Like that would be, like that okay, would be, that would know, be a little stupid. bit less. But these are two that completely different movies, guys. I can't. I know. Like, okay, they are. They are. Whatever. Let's. Okay, I'm just gonna put that aside. We'll talk after the podcast, Mister. No, oh. no dessert for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, but I have, I have not like I had such a hard time. Like I have been thinking about this since literally like the beginning of the semester of my school semester because I can't choose between them. I can't. I know. I've, you know, I like originally, I'm just gonna put it out there. When I listed, when I listed all my movies, I originally couldn't rank them. Period. And I actually had to sit down and really, really, you know, just think about all the details I love so much. So I completely understand where you're coming from. Don't yeah. worry. Uh, I I think both of the films are fantastic. Also, um, yeah. I want right, to. Right, let's... What? But what? No, I think we should talk about them. Yeah, let's um, talk because about I, as okay. much as again, I'm not. I don't like that you tied them. Um, I, I'm a big fan of both movies. I'm not oh, yeah, saying anything totally. negative about Winter Soldier or Lego Movie. Lego Movie was the was one of the biggest surprises of the year. Um, in terms of just like that should not be good. The Lego Movie Oof. should be complete cash in. I don't know. But, but they made it completely work. They yeah, they I mean, put I an was, effort uh, and yeah, it was awesome. Won. I, I don't like the idea that nothing that people went into the Lego movie saying nothing about it should be good. Well, no, I don't, but yeah, think I don't that, like that either. No, that title, you should not expect greatness. Yeah, but you I... have two great directors. Oh, but you have Phil Lord and Chris Miller. That. Like, just think about the concept of the Lego movie. 
and how miraculous it is that they got good people and made it an excellent film. That's a that's, yeah, and it's had a miracle. It actually, about Lego instead yes. of just like oh, it's Lego movie. Like, right. It wasn't it, just Avengers. Now, Sean, and Lego. The, it was the about original title. Yes. The original true. title was the Lego Movie: The Piece of Resistance. So would that have like changed your mind at all? Uh, that, was may, that would that? have lowered my expectations actually, because that that feels like one of like a direct to DVD Lego Movie, like Lego City. <laughs> you know, one of those. So the title doesn't matter. I just Legosity. mean the concept. Yeah. I, I, you know, okay, never mind. I'll drop that. But it's a really funny movie, really well animated. Has some of the best, like, just visual oh, yeah. humor of the oh, year. Oh God, yes. Um, this was our appetizer that would become the year of Chris Pratt. Um, yeah, really. That was our appetizer main Chris course, Pratt of course. Sc- being uh, Chris, Guardians Chris of the Galaxy. Pratt and ScarJo absolutely rocked it this year. Like, absolutely. But they, I don't think they've ever been in a movie together. So nope. No, they haven't. And then our dessert that could by change the way, in a few years, honestly. Our but dessert's gonna be Jurassic World. Lego movie <laughs> was the thing. appetizer. Right? Guardians of the Galaxy was the main course. And our, our dessert was the little taste of a uh, Jurassic World with the with the trailer. Uh, that yeah, was the year yeah. of Chris Pratt, everybody. Uh, Lucy mm-hmm. was the really undercooked, gave you salmonella uh, entree <laughs> of the year of Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> well, yeah, and also, you know, the, uh, all, you know, with other stuff like Under the Skin and whatnot. And you know, The is... Winter Soldier. Great segue, Self. Thank you, Self. So Winter Soldier, <laughs> I also really liked. I, I saw it four times this year. Um, oh, my God. It, 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 it's a great movie. It's a really great movie. Yeah, I've seen it, like, three times, I think. Yeah. I know, but geez, three well, times. Well, it's because I was I was in L.A. I was, I was visiting a friend, and he hadn't seen it, so we went. And then my dad okay, hadn't well, seen it. Well, I guess there's it, reasons, obviously, yes. but I don't know. Three times in one year. Four times. Four times. And this Excuse was while me. it was in theaters. I haven't seen it since then. <laughs> Wow! Like I watch this movie over and over again, and usually after a while, I can be like, "Okay, I have some problems." You're like, "I have problems with Back to the Future," like my favorite movie. But Winter Soldier, I watch it again and again. I just like I'm trying my best, but I just can't find anything to seriously complain well, about. My, like, seriously, it just... my only complaint is after rewatching it a few times, like you know, this kind of this story, like it hits a lot of the same Marvel notes that marvel's been doing in all their movies but again it's i mean it's okay if the framework's a lot dated it's wonderfully done you know it's a yeah. it's probably the best directed uh marvel mm-hmm. movie like you can just tell by the performances and how it all fits together it's probably the best directed uh from yes. the russo brothers which i'm well, well, glad they're gonna take over for infinity war hopefully well wait Woo! sean you had a problem with the movie you had a pretty big problem Yes, um, originally that kind of went away a bit, but I, just to repeat for others, I, I felt like it was trying too hard to be too impactful on the MCU, like it didn't really fit with the MCU how big it was. But I, I, I've kind of just let that go as my good friend, the Queen of uh, Frozen joke. I, I can't remember the place. <laughs> I, I let it go. Okay, that was the joke. Uh, uh, I let that go. So I let that go. I still maintain that it is a slight problem, but it's not as big as I guess I thought on the review. So if you watch the review, I was much more harsh on that aspect. I'm not as harsh. Not as harsh anymore. Uh, I think the only main, the only problem I have with the Winter Soldier is that sometimes the action's a little too shaky. The shaky cam yeah, gets in the way a little bit, but it's not. It's not a huge issue. I just think that Captain America is just such a well realized concept, and really, that, that can go for both movies. Uh, you know, Winter Soldier, as Max loves to push, you know, which is great. You, you take this character that didn't really get that much to chew on in the first movie, and then you give him such an interesting dilemma mm-hmm. uh, within this movie about, you know, the world is no longer what it was when he was in it. You know, it's with, not with cartoonishly like Good right. versus Evil. Now, I love First Avenger. I love that movie. So I'm not, I'm not going to, like, spend time on yeah, that. That's but, good. Like, it's definitely yeah. good. I would give it yeah, that. Yeah, but, but, like, but, you know, what. Winter Soldier did was like it put him in this like in the modern world and it totally functioned even though he didn't really have to change it was about him understanding how this world works and I guess the message here is that the modern world is full of backstabbers and betrayals and Robert Redford is, and yeah. Robert is and, also hey, full hey, of Robert Redford ain't nothing wrong praise Redford no there's nothing wrong with Robert Redford oh, oh yeah right. I, lo- I love Robert there's Redford there's nothing wrong with the candidate folks very talented man very talented right. get that reference you're great Okay. And uh, oh, so, before we move on, wait, hold on. Okay. Before we move on, I just want to also point out with the Lego Movie, um, I think that one of the best parts about it is that you, you we mentioned that it is about Legos, but it's about, it's about so much more than just Legos. Well, no, it's and, not about Legos. It's about the Lego company. It's about right, them. I know, it's exactly. About, well, well what also, I very concept. It's about creativity almost in general. Exactly. Yeah. What yeah. I, yeah. What I mean, the uh, moral yeah, foundation. Level, yeah. It's... The moral foundation set with this movie is so great. There are so many morals that kind of go with you one another, what? and they work so perfectly in creating one final product. Especially that ending. Mm-hmm. Oh my oh, god! Like to, the I ending is so. Up. Actually, I'm great. glad you reminded it's me. It's fantastic. You it's know, what? I'm so gonna go ahead great. and say it. 
Oh, man. The Lego movie was this year's Pixar movie. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Yeah, no, that's that was fair. It, you know? It's just yeah, like Hobbit and nothing. Ralph was got the Pixar nothing. movie of that year. On yeah, Lego. pretty much. Yep. Anyway. Um, anyway, moving on. Sorry, okay. that took a while. So Larry, Again, I do apologize for the tie, but I just I couldn't I couldn't do it. We will talk later, young man. <laughs> when your father you're gets dad. home, Jeez. he will uh, hear about this. Oh, boy. So, Larry, do you want to close us out? Do you think you got a strong enough movie, or do you want me to close us out? Well, I mean, I'm the only one that's seen the movie. Yeah, so maybe we shouldn't end on that because I know we've all yeah. seen mine. I don't think yeah, you're, we've I'm all shock seen anyone yours. With mine. Okay, so I'll so just, I'll just go, go with mine. Uh, my favorite movie of the year is a little little old movie called Whiplash. Um, <laughs> that's that's a whip. Exactly. Well, kind of whiplash. Uh, yeah. It is kind of a whiplash, a lashing of a whip. Uh-huh. Um, so this movie is being so critically underviewed it, it by what? so many people. Um, I'm, what are you what, talking about? No, I meant no, 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 no. I'm not saying critically as in commercially. No, it's I'm not. saying I'm saying critically as in a, it's very, very, very. Maybe I'm using the wrong word. Not critically underviewed. It's um, uh, what's critically whatever. uh hidden? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Commercially underviewed. What do you mean? What do you mean word. to say? Like, do you well, say I that mean like, people is, don't like not it? Enough, a, no, or? not enough people are seeing it. That's what I'm. So talking yeah, it's about. not. Yeah, it's it's hidden. It's not you know. Fine. It looks it's, to be. It's, it's going to become a hidden gem. Yeah, uh, probably. I don't know if it's getting a wider release. Maybe um, with some it's Oscar not. buzz. I don't because know if it gets I, nominated for things. I, I don't know, know that it's not because it's playing at the theater I work at. So it's not well, getting a wide release. <laughs> well, it's playing. It was playing at a few theaters in Jersey too. And that's so. interesting, isn't J.K. Simmons in that? Yeah. Yep. And Miles awesome. Teller, who's going to be in, in that Fantastic Four? Like he's a pretty big star. Yeah, he was also Miles in Taylor, Divergent. He was also in He's that a... awkward moment, which came out about a year ago. Well, yeah. Uh, so as as we've established, not enough people have seen this movie, and it pro- and not enough of you probably will. But I am going to push this to as far as I possibly can. If you ever get even the slightest chance of seeing Whiplash, you have to see this movie. See that this is I, I see. I want to listen to you so bad, Larry, and I am. That's the problem. That I thought we were recording this later. I'm going to see Whiplash very soon. It's at the theater I work at, and I, oh, I want to go see it like in the next few good. days, hopefully. Good, and so it's good, too bad that good. we're recording this, and I haven't seen it because I could I could talk to you about it. Well, hey, look again. I I am totally up to doing a podcast later where we go back to films that we missed and we give our opinion. The Lucy and Whiplash review episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but it's just That'd be a contrast. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna admit there's a huge personal reason why I love this movie. I've been a drummer for eight years. I've been a dr- I've been a jazz drummer specifically for seven. All right, I I love percussion. I love jazz music, and so obviously Caravan is literally not Caravan. That's the song they perform. Whiplash is right up my alley, like literally. Like there's no other movie that I should have seen this year other than Whiplash. But there's so much more to the movie than just that. This is a character study about what it takes to be one of the greats. Uh, you know. It's fun. I actually hosted a show called The Greats. Uh, but it's... <laughs> it, yeah, exactly, right? But the show is dead now. Oh, well. A moment of silence. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, eventually, eventually, Miles Teller isn't dead. And he is off to do some great things because he does such a great job in this movie playing. You know, he doesn't seem like an interesting character at first. But then you see how he interacts with J.K. Simmons and the beautiful psychological battles that they do. Because, see, here's the thing with movies like this. You think, like, oh, no, it's just going to be the pupil who gets beaten up by the teacher with his words. And then eventually at the very, very end of the movie, he's going to stand up for himself. No, 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 no. Whiplash exceeds all expectations in giving you a legitimate battle. You have the student versus the teacher. It is not one-sided. It is multi-sided. All right, you have a great battle. And J.K. Simmons, guys, J.K. Simmons, man. Why don't more people know about this guy? Give me, right, this, just, his, give me, his, give me a picture of Spider-Man. Yeah, he, all we, everyone Spider-Man. just knows him as uh, you yeah, tell J. My Jonah wife. Jameson. <laughs> Thank you. That's <laughs> my favorite J.K. Simmons he, he deserves, He deserves to be up there because this performance alone, just on it, like, oh, man. I really hope he strikes it big within the next year or two. Because he totally deserves some sort of award. He's already he's been nominated for a Golden Globe uh, for this film, thank God. And his passion and the sheer intimidation he gives into every single line of yelling is just uh, incredible. Like I mentioned in Nightcrawler, how how Nightcrawler was probably the most engaging movie we've ever seen. That's probably true. I wouldn't say Night. I wouldn't say Whiplash is as engaging as 
Nightcrawler, but it's just as interesting and it's just as well made, cinematically even. Just the, the techniques they use here and the ending is probably the best ending I've ever watched to a film. It is so... It is so shocking and puts so many twists, but yet still manages to keep you involved and push the story along to probably one of the best just final moments. Just that, that one last shot. It's beautiful. Um, Can it beat and, Inception, though, for best ending shot? Uh, it totally beats Inception. Oh, but come on. Does the top uh, fall, Larry? Does it fall? <laughs> Anyway. Uh, I don't need to know whether the top falls. All right, that's up to interpretation. But this yes. movie doesn't uh, leave it up actually, to it's interpretation. Actually, who says it does fall after the shots are. Shh. Wow, way to ruin it, Max. Good job. <laughs> no spoilers. Good job. Good job, Max. Jesus. All right, but just to conclude, it's just it's so engaging. And I mean, I un- I will understand if Sean, you walk into this movie and you're just like you walk out of it, it's like, oh, it's all right, you know, because this is. A lot of the pure engagement this movie comes from, and my enjoyment of it, comes from a musical background. Uh, I played trumpet love... for seven years. Oh, you did? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Then you'll, you'll play totally what for seven years? Trumpet. Dude, d- d- Max, learn how to play the bass, and we can form a jazz trio. Sweet. Jeez, I haven't this played will it be in awesome. three years. <laughs> Who cares? We'll be a great jazz trio. Anyway, okay. so... You heard it here, folks. Yep, rule third <laughs> jazz trio. Jazz trio, even though we live on totally different uh, <laughs> sides of the country. <laughs> okay, whatever. The point of the matter is... This is just such a well-realized, such a fulfilling movie. And it takes you on a ride. It just grabs you. And really, the most important thing to take out of it is this guy, the man who made this movie, his name's Damien Chazelle. Uh, He's an up-and-comer. He made some other movies in the past, but this is probably his most uh, widest release. He's just beginning to make movies. Like, this is the guy who is... we hope in like maybe 20 or 30 years directs like like a film that people regard as like one of the best like uh, this is a man who what be careful larry i know just, i know let's hope he doesn't Shyamalan. Uh oh god i really hope he doesn't Shyamalan. Yeah. but this is a man who clearly understands what it's like to grapple with a character's emotions how to tell a story how to invest yourself into one's character because this is a very relatable story about a guy who wants to be great at what he does right i mean we've all been there we've all had that thing that we want to be great at we've all had the teacher that's pushed us and so i just i can't really phrase it there's probably some more deeper message about this movie that i could probably evoke but it's just it's an experience just uh simply put it is in a movie experience and again if you ever get the chance don't jump on it please okay boom so um, I will wrap us up with uh, probably the least, like, no, 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 definitely the least surprising um, pick of all these movies we've talked about. Uh, I'm, I'm Okay, Larry Max, on, on the count of three, you two are going to tell me what my film of the year is. Okay, ready? Oh, wait, I don't, three, I don't, I don't, actually, I don't actually know. I don't know. You don't know? No How can you clue. not know what my film of the year is? Well, I mean, I can make uh, a few suggestions. Okay, you guys, guess what you would think and say it at the count of three. Ready? Okay. Three, um, two, one. Guardians? Transformers. What the know. crap, people? What? It, it's Interstellar. <laughs> oh. oh. Come oh. on, guys. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on. All right. How can you Whatever. not think? Uh, it's like you don't even know me. It's it's like you don't even oh, know me. Oh, I definitely me. know you have a Christopher it's Nolan like fetish. It's like some know kind you of Nolan promoting so machine. No, no, that's no. Not See, here's human. the thing. Here's my counter to that. Interstellar became my favorite movie of the year, despite me going in worried about it. I was not looking for self-confirmation or like, this movie's going to be my favorite of the year. And then it's bad, but I'm like, no, it is. It is. Because I I wanted it to be so badly. I went in worried because I realized that sentimentality and emotion is not Nolan's strong suit. And reviews were saying that this is easily the most sentimental and emotional based film he's done. And so I was so scared this was going to be a movie of that doesn't quite work, Mr. Nolan. You should move back <laughs> to what you're Mr. good Mr. at. Mr. O, Mr. O, it, it, it doesn't and work. There, like End I said, Inception's in my top ten favorite movies, but it has those moments where I'm like, I mean, it's, it's working. It's just, yeah, you should go back to what you do better. And I was afraid <laughs> there was going to be a whole movie of on that edge or worse, like it goes off that edge. It oh, just man. doesn't work. Wrong. This is the least Nolan movie he's done. And so I, I, this shows some range, I think, because it is much more emotional based than his other movies it isn't nearly as cold ne- ne- nearly as sterile isn't as cool 
You know? Do you guys get what I'm talking about? Yeah, I totally get what you're talking about. And I think it's it the, works. It's the least Nolan y movie that ever Nolan. Exactly, but it is Nolan. And yeah. I yeah, I don't know what to say. I just I was engaged the entire time. I, I think it just all worked. It had a, a beautiful aesthetic. I think people real need to realize that just going in space gives your film an, a unique and interesting look. But man, they made it look so cool. I will say I will say they definitely took their own idea of what space and different planets look like, which is really yeah. nice. I do admire that because I would have I got look gravity. We all have our own thing issues. I have my own issues with gravity, but one of the main issues is that I got tired of looking at space. <laughs> I did just really? space, black That's black fair. stars. That's most of the movie. I don't. It's okay. I just. I, okay. I, I, no, but Interstellar really showed planets. They showed different environments. Yeah. The waves, the mountains. You know, it was good. I like yeah, that and, they did that. And I mean, it. It also just like I don't know. I don't know how to explain. I'm. I'm trying to you know kind of talk about why it's my favorite. I. It's my favorite because it was the most intense movie going experience. A lot like how Max, you could uh, you could totally see Muppets Most Wanted not being people's worst but for you personally it was just the worst movie going experience it's the exact opposite with interstellar it's hard for me to really nail down and understand if others don't agree but it was the best movie going experience it was just so it's such a complete film to me i don't know what i'd add i don't know anything i'd get rid of i think it all works really well together i think it's incredibly well acted mcconaughey of course is our next day on day lewis apparently Hath Hathaway, I'm all you know. I'm always a fan. Jessica Chastain, well, she didn't get as much as I would have liked. Got enough. She did a great job. It just all worked, and it was funny too. I don't want to spoil the character that's the funniest because I think it's kind of cool that it's a surprise. What he wasn't shown in trailers. It wasn't shown in trailers. Mystery. Um, but yeah, it was just okay. I'm just rambling. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say though? It's the most complete film I saw this year. Nothing felt out of place, and nothing felt missing. And everything that was there was excellent. Good. Yeah. Like, good. Yeah. Sum it up well enough. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I should have better paired. Like with Days of Future Past, I can nail down exactly why it's my runner up. But Interstellar, I, I can't nail it down. I just think everything works. Hey, you know, to give your look, I mean, whenever I make these top 10 lists of the year, um, a lot of people go the best, you know, the best of the year. But I never liked calling it that because to be honest, I made my own personal top 15 for the year. And some films that are technically just they have they're better on a technical standpoint are lower on the list than other movies mm -hmm. but that's not the point of making a top 10 films of the year. the top 10 films of the year list is meant to show your personal favorite movies of the year so to give yeah. your to give your favorite movie just the excuse of it was personally the best experience i had this year shouldn't be a fault at mm -hmm. all really if it's your favorite movie, it's your favorite movie. It's a personal okay. basis. Cool, yeah. And honestly, you can uh, watch our review. Um, we, we reviewed it, and that's I, I probably go in more detail about why I, I love oh, it you so do. much. Oh, you do. <laughs> yeah. You so definitely. go check that out because I don't want to take up all this time. But yeah, that's really all I can say is just it was it was my favorite movie I saw this year. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds mm -hmm. so simple, but it undeniably was. Though again, Days of Future Past came close. But it had reasons I could explain. Interstellar is an enigma, but it it, it captivated me. It is an enigma. It is an All enigma. right. Well, look yeah, at that. I think we can wrap up. Um, I think we're over the limit. We're gonna do runner ups. Do we want to just like really quickly list runner ups? Yeah, I want to list a few movies we never got the chance to talk about in okay, this shoot. podcast, real quick, that are on my list. Uh, number one. Um, so you know, Whiplash is my number one. Nightcrawler is my number two. My third, which I think is just equally as good as Nightcrawler, and Whiplash is the Imitation Game. Okay, uh, with Larry, Benedict I Cumberbatch. literally mean list. No other words, just titles. Go. Okay, yeah, I was okay. So the Imitation Game, other movies, Snowpiercer was really good. Another Chris Evans movie, like we talked about. I'm hearing other words, Larry. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Birdman, uh, Chef, uh, and the Grand Budapest Hotel. Those are okay. also some. Max, do you have any runner-ups to list? Um, let's see, we got 22 Jump Street, mm -hmm. Chef, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, How to Change Dragon 2, and, uh, um, and, damn, there was something else, I cannot think of off the top of my head, but there's, there's something else, I am trying to think of it, and it is not coming, if I just say words, maybe it'll happen, and, no, it looks like Alright, nothing. well, maybe I'll say it, I actually did a top ten, so I'll just run through it really quick, um, Gone Girl. Mockingjay Part 1, Lego Movie, Winter Soldier. Uh, Gone Girl! 
Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, that's um, another great one. Edge of Tomorrow is, is up there. Transformers 4, purely on enjoyment. Terrible movie, don't get me wrong. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and 22 Jump Street. Those were my runner-ups. Whoa, wait, whoa, wait, wait. Terrible movie? Hold up a second, hold up. Oh, God. What? We had an entire review, the basis of which was we could not decide whether or not this was good or bad. Oh, I've decided. <laughs> I've decided really? by now. Well, that broke it. Yep. Anyway. Way to ruin it. <laughs> this is where we should end with Max upset at me. That's you, that's, get a, used to that's, that, an, that's an ongoing for trend for this podcast. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us. If you did, hypothetical audience. Hopefully, we have more of a hypothetical audience uh, now that we're on iTunes. Hopefully, you'll I mean, tune to be in. fair, we could have like the entire like hypothetical population of the world could be listening. That's true. To this also, these waves could be sent out into space. Like some alien race could get hold on like an ice hypothetical planet. alien race. What up? Hey, Yo. hypothetical alien listeners. Uh, Baruch up? Danuk or something. <laughs> anyway, we're going to wrap up. Thanks for listening. And stu- tune in next time for... Uh, we- we're going to go through next year. We're just going to quick fire, go through each movie, give thoughts. You know, the big releases upcoming of 2015. That'll be a lot of fun. Until then, my name is Sean. My name is Matt. Uh, Larry, wow. <laughs> wow. <sighs> All right. What a way to Get end used to it that, up. folks. Now, I'm just Larry and Max. I don't know who this guy is. I don't He's, know. I don't know who he is either. I'm going to try to call the cops. He, he <laughs> broke into our digital studio. <laughs> How, how'd you get studio. into our podcast? How'd you get into our podcast? I just walked in, dude. You, got, you guys have to lock your doors. Yeah, well, that's just, that's <laughs> hostile. We want to be neighborly. Yes. Yeah, anyway, that's Max. Says he's not going to say, Max, can yeah. you say your name? And, and my name is Max. Thank you. And yeah. uh, thanks again for joining us. Goodbye. And hopefully, oh, quick, quick thing. Leave in the comments if you're on YouTube. Okay, we're gonna ask you what your best and worst movie of 2014 was. We want, we want like you know viewer feedback if we ever get them. So we're gonna start a new thing with like a question uh, at the end of each episode. So first, the uh, first thing you should do is reply, and you can do that by uh, you can uh, comment on the U- on this video on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, but if you're through iTunes or anything, you can. Um, post on the website's page where you can look in the comments there. You can tweet us at Rule Thirds. You can go to the Facebook page. Is it just Facebook.com slash Rule Thirds, guys? I think we yeah. have that. Yeah, Facebook.com slash Rule Thirds. Or you can email us at Rule Thirds at gmail.com and we will uh, talk about them at the beginning of next yeah, episode. Yeah, we'll talk about them. Yeah, we'll go over them. Please. Please. You, have, you, have no excuse. We have, you have no excuse, folks. You have five different ways you can do this. Yes, a lot of ways. Just contact us because no one else is but yes. seriously though we should wrap this up so let us know what yours are those were ours hopefully you get a idea if you're a newcomer of what the show is like and what we're like this is a bit longer it's like a quite a bit longer than usual but that's good i think this was an excellent uh excellent discussion probably one of my favorites uh episodes of the podcast and i mean before not just because this is the first of the thirds but let's end it thank you again for listening Bye-bye. bye 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 really max you're not gonna do an inaugural see ya <laughs> no, because uh, this is a new age of Rule Thirds. Uh, it's a the new, new dawn. It's a new day. The new dawn new of life. the planet of the Rule Thirds. Oh, uh, puns. Well, I could have said a- Avengers Age of Rule Thirds. I went with the uh, classier joke. The Rule Thirds Awakened. Yes, the Rule uh, Thirds Awakened. Exactly. <laughs>